I'm Marc Elian Bégin. I'm, um, I'm French Canadian, uh, but I live in Switzerland now, so I'm very uh, pleased to have been invited because uh, it's great to be with you guys, but also it gave me an opportunity to spend a, a short week with uh, friends and family in Montreal on the way in, uh, which also meant that I'm, uh, I've recovered from jet lag, which is, uh, is great. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about uh, Slipstream um, in, in the next uh, half an hour. Uh, I'll quickly introduce Six Squared and go through uh, why we built Slipstream, some of the challenges there, and also uh, talk about the interface with uh, the infrastructure as a service layer, uh, which uh, includes uh, CloudStack, and then uh, hopefully have time for some questions at the end. Okay, so we're based in Geneva, I said that before. Uh, we were founded in 2007, so we're independent, we're free. I hope we're innovative. Um, here are the customers uh, we have. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll recognize some of them. They're mostly uh, European. Um, we have partnerships and uh, collaborations with uh, Amazon and IBM. Um, something that is quite exciting at the moment is Helix Nebula. I don't know if uh, some of you have, uh, have heard. It's basically the big um, science labs in Europe, like CERN, like the European Space Agency, MBL, and PIC, that have basically um, initiated a public-private partnership um, with uh, a bunch of um, industrials uh, in Europe to um, federate uh, cloud uh, capabilities. And Slipstream that I'm going to present to you is, is used as a, as a broker, as the, the unified interface to this federated uh, cloud, which is uh, it's quite exciting for, for, uh, for us. Um, so what we do in terms of uh, products and technologies, Slipstream, obviously, is the, uh, the focus of this talk. But we also do Stratus Lab. Um, and we provide uh, professional services around uh, Stratus Lab, which is a, an infrastructure as a service solution, but is really focused on simple uh, deployment um, and simplicity of, of use. Uh, as of late, we've, uh, we've combined the two together to create uh, a new product called uh, the Nuvla Box. And this is uh, basically, a, it's a cloud in a box. It's about this size. It's a fanless PC. You can host up to eight virtual machines. It's a turnkey solution. You plug it in, you switch it on, and you're, you're good to go. And it integrates uh, Slipstream, so it has its own uh, app store if you want. And you can remote control it as well if you want. So it's, uh, we're positioning it for uh, field operations. You, know, you, you go somewhere, you switch it on, and you're good to go. Anyways, um, and it was introduced in Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress. OK, so um, the main topic is, is, uh, is Slipstream. So what is Slipstream? It's a platform as a service, as Sebastian introduced. Uh, it's open source. It's been open source for over a year now. Um, it's multi-cloud by its very nature. Um, it's multi-tenant as well. And it's all about automation. Okay, that's what the, 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 the point of, of, of Slipstream is. It's, it's about automation. Now, let's try to position uh, Slipstream in the uh, as-a-service neighborhood. Um, so we have the infrastructure as a service. Cloud Stack is, is, a, is, a, is a great uh, example of that. Uh, we have the platform as a service, which uh, is, is an abstraction of that, trying to automate the way things are deployed. We have different types of platform as a service. We have the, uh, uh, if you want, the, the abstract ones, like the, the Google App Engine, the Heroku, the uh, Azure in its first incarnation, which is really a, a, mechanic, a framework for for a request response type, type deployment. That's not what Slipstream is about. It's this, the second camp, if you want, with the, with the, uh, the, the Cloudify, the, uh, uh, the Cloud Foundry, the Service Mesh, the Instratus, and, and, and there's, there's many more, uh, which is really a, 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 a solution to take advantage of infrastructure as a service, to elevate a little bit uh, in, in the value chain. So Slipstream is uh, a pass in that sense. It uses infrastructure as a service APIs, and it's often delivered or used as a SaaS. OK, so the, this is the, 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 the main screen. I'll give you a, a short demo in, in a minute or two. Um, but we also have a, it's, it's a RESTful web service, so you can actually interface it in, 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 uh, in REST. And we also, I'm sorry you can't see here, it's, um, it's a Python client that you can install through pip. So you can do the same thing as you would do with the interface, the user interface uh, with a, a command line client. So what I'm going to try to do is to explain um, the two driving use cases uh, in, in, in Slipstream, starting with the, uh, the top-down approach. Okay. And it comes from the, 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 the metaphor of the, the, the App Store, something that obviously we all know now in the mobile world, that, apps, uh, that Apple 
uh, has started and, and Google or Android is, is, is also uh, using. The idea that um, we can provision application in a very simple way and to democratize that, that process as much as possible. It's a single button. You, you look for what you're, you're, you're interested in, you press a button, and then the details of provisioning that application in the cloud is taken care of. Okay. So that's the top down. It's the, uh, what we, we position as the enterprise open app store. Okay. It's a, so it's, it's, it's creating a framework where you can have a dialogue between a software engineer and a customer. And a customer could be an end customer, but it could also be a, a software engineer, where um, the, the, the first one will provide recipes, okay, and then the second will be able to use those recipes in a convenient way uh, to target the deployment into a, the cloud of, of his or of, of her, her choice, okay. Um, so let, let's have a quick look at what it looks like in, in Slipstream uh, at the moment. So let me quickly log in. Um, if I get the right password, it's going to help. There you go. Okay, so um, once logged in, I have the ability to, uh, to look at the, uh, the first section is the, the App Store. So it's, the, the, it's possible to um, curate um, um, some uh, applications uh, in, in, in the system and have them presented in, 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 the, uh, in a simple, simple screen where I, for example, can go and in a single action deploy, for example, a WordPress. Okay, so I click on this button and then I'm, I'm presented with a uh, uh, first screen, which just tells me, you know, a few parameters that the uh, the recipe provider has created, and I just need to provide those, uh, fill fill those in, um, including the choice of my uh, the, the cloud I'm going to provide provision on. So I'm going to provision on Exoscale. That's a it's a Swiss um, public uh, cloud uh, that is based on CloudStack. Um, so I'm going to use this. Um, the SaaS that we provide uh, is also connected with uh, uh, Amazon. And I'll provide a, a, a title here. Um, I'll just call it Hello because I'll, I'll show you uh, Hello Denver. Okay, now I'm going to run this. So it's now it's going on and it's going to deploy um, with the big screen. It's a bit hard to see right here. So it's going to basically deploy uh, uh, the, the WordPress that I, I've just uh, I've just described. It's going to take a few minutes, um, so we'll look at it uh, at the end of the the, um, the presentation. What I'll do now is just switch quickly switch to the, the dashboard and see. I think I've got uh, under Exoscale one that I've created earlier. Uh, which one is it? Uh, this one. And if I go there, there's an IP address. I think it's that one. Voila. So that's what I, I ran just, just before the, the demo. So that's the, the WordPress that I, I've just deployed. Okay. So it, it's the idea of creating a really simple round circle between um, somebody who provides all the recipes to create deploy an application and being able to consume this application. Okay. So that's the, the, the top-down view of it. But what is interesting is while we're provisioning, we're providing this for some you know, managed service providers or ISVs that want to help users uh, provision their applications, we see that when we use the system ourselves to build a system, because we use Slipstream to deploy the, the system, this convenience is actually very useful for developers as well. Which brings me to my second um, use case, which is the, 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 the bottom up, uh, which is the, 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 what we call the DevOps use case. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to have time to introduce DevOps, but you know, who has not heard of DevOps? Okay, so I'll take that. You're either shy or, or you know what DevOps is, which is great. Um, it's the idea of, in this case, creating a, a flow, a continuous flow to bind development activities and operations activities in, in, in through, through automation. So that the ability to say, I, I want to modify a piece of software and I want to see the result of that in in, a, in production or in pre-production as fast as possible and create this dialogue and this continuous, feed, continuous feedback, okay? Um, and at, at the end of the day, what, what we're interested in is find a framework in which we can execute something like a, a piece of script. And this is actually a script I just uh, invoked by clicking the, the, the run button, um, which is a piece of bash that will use uh, Puppet, the standalone, to actually 
install and configure uh, WordPress for me on, on the cloud of my choice. Having taken care of what kind of, you know, how much core, RAM, storage, and so on, is, 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 uh, it's all described in the, uh, in the image definition that I've, I've used under the hood. So if I go back quickly to my uh, example, so I'll stop this one, close, close this one, go back to my dashboard. Um, actually, sorry, I'm gonna go back to the welcome screen, close the app store, and I'll go and, and, and um, explore my own space. One of them is Slipstream itself, and what I can do is provision Slipstream with Slipstream. Okay, so if I, if I run here, uh, it's asking me a bunch of questions. One of them is, is you know, which type of repository I want to I wanna deploy. So this is release, so it's gonna deploy the latest release. I could put snapshot here or stage. Then it will basically pick packages from a different location. There's a different recipe here where you can actually provide the exact version number. So you can connect this to a Jenkins continuous integration server, for example. It's gonna deploy the thing and then just run all this, the, the, the script you want to, the test you wanna run with it, okay? So I'll leave it this way and then I'll just click run. And again, it goes out and then just provisions that, that system. And, and I've done that just before on exascale, uh, which will be this one. And I'll just pull the IP of this guy. Voila, so I've got Slipstream deployed by Slipstream. Okay, and that's how we use it. You know, we take one stable version and we, we roll out a new version until we're, we're, we're satisfied and then we roll that out and we, we, we move on, okay. And what we, we see actually is, is we see this, this constant, constant dialogue between uh, the, the developers and, and uh, for, for, for the app, but also when we use this for customers, our customers use this in their own uh, internal processes, they create this, this, uh, this, this dialogue of somebody who wants to work on a component, is like uh, uh, working on a window, um, instead of just having the, the wall, they can actually provision the entire building and, and fiddle the window in, which actually provides great value in as opposed to you know, oh, it works on my laptop, and the problem must be somewhere else. We, you know, we break that, 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 uh, that weird dialogue by being able to actually provision the entire system the same way every time. Now, this is initial deployment, right? And there's a big discussion around the platform as a service world at the moment is what, what's next? What, what, what do you do once you've deployed initially your system into production? And there's two approaches. Um, I'm not too uh, hung up on, on the taxonomy. This is, these are my terms, but there's, there's two approaches in terms of what you do once an application is in production to maintain it, okay? So there's the first approach that I call managed, um, which is the upgrade, migrate, in situ, okay? And then the second one is the coordinated one. Um, so the first one is like a, a, a mutable deployment, which you'll, you'll basically tie it into a, a managed uh, puppet or chef, and then that system will be managed through, through that, that, that loop. Um, and the second one is, is to say, uh, we'll, we'll deploy once, it's immutable, we wanna create a, a, an upgrade of this, then we deploy another one, we migrate if required, uh, we switch, and then we decommission the, the first one, okay? Um, what we see is that uh, often, uh, it's not clear that the, uh, the, the, the managed approach is always required, okay? It's often pushed as that's the way to do it. But when you, you speak to people that are already kind of wary of, of, of a transition to cloud and so on, when you add that extra burden of having to switch to yet another complex system, because these systems are great, we use them, but they're, they're complicated, um, often that's too, too big a, a step to, to go through. So we think there is great value in, 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 in um, pursuing uh, what we call the coordinated approach, which is just create immutable deployments and then redeploy, switch, and then scratch. So in terms of Slipstream, we're agnostic, we don't care. Both, work, both systems will work the same. Um, but we realize that um, there's a lot of bash out there, there's a lot of, of, uh, of, of PowerShell out there, way more than uh, uh, Puppet or Chef um, um, deployments. And there was a, a discussion at the, one of the DevOps uh, in, in uh, Gothenburg uh, a while ago 
where basically the chef and the puppet guys were talking, you know, kind of arguing with each other. And someone else said, look, stop fighting. You know, the enemy is bash. 90% of the market is, is bash driven. So, you know, 10% is not worth <laughs> fighting. And I, we, we think we see the same, right? So what we are saying is, let's you know, bring your bash, bring your PowerShell, get the benefit of automation, because that's the first order return on investment, and then start to roll into Right now, maybe we want to put some sanity in, in, in the picture and then roll out, you know, Puppet Chef, maybe in standalone mode before you move into a, a managed mode. Anyways, so, uh, you know, maybe the, the, the guideline is if everything that is stateless and try to, to bring all of your state at the same place, then coordinated approach is probably a good, a good idea. And then when you have complex state to manage and then migration of that state is complicated, then maybe the use case of, of managed uh, way is, 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 uh, is interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the, the data model inside Slipstream. How does that work? It's actually quite simple. We have a few abstracts. So image is, if you uh, remember your patterns uh, for the developers in the room, uh, image provides inheritance. Okay, so you can actually compose your blocks out of uh, inheritance. So you have a native image, which will map to you know, the, the real thing in, in, in the cloud you, you want to deploy. And you can say, right, I've got, from that native image, I'm going to put my dependencies, my, my Tomcats, my... Uh, my database, my, my things like that, okay. And then on top of that, maybe um, I'll, I'll put the, the things that move often, the software I'm, I'm working on. And then you can actually capture those as, as, as new native images and everything is version controlled. So it actually speeds up things uh, a, a lot. So that's for a single image. The second construct is a deployment. That provides aggregation. So when you, you, you deploy, um, uh, an application that is, is uh, multi-tier. Okay, you'll have multi-virtual machines that you need to be deployed together and coordinated. That's what the deployment model does. Okay, it provides coordination between those things so that the database starts before your server, before your test clients, for example, and there's messaging that, that will ensure that the coordination is, is working great. The third one is project, which well, our project is containment. It's like folders in the file system, so it allows you to kind of organize your information properly. And the run is to turn a, a, an image or deployment into a real thing, right? That's what is, gets handed over to the connector and say, I turned that abstract thing into real virtual machines in, in the cloud. And everything is, as I said, is version control. So you can, every changes is version control. You can actually create relationships between those things as floating, so they always take the latest, or you can pin them to specific version, which is a good way to, uh, to control what, what goes into production. Okay, so here's a quick example of, if you pick the version of CentOS, then you have version four and then version 55, and commit changes and so on, and it's, it's taken care of in the system. Um, I'm go not going to talk too much about the actual deployment examples, because um, I gave you a, a, a quick demo, just to say that you know, Slipstream provisions into the cloud, configures that virtual machine when it's deployed, and it, it, it removes itself from that, that, uh, that workflow, and then the user can actually talk to it, in this case, through a public network. Okay. So the, the idea is that it's, 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 it's non-intrusive. It, it, it triggers the deployment and then it gets out of the picture. We can also do a multiple uh, multi-tier deployment, like as I said. And what is also interesting is that when we create uh, a deployment, which is an aggregation of images, you can also um, define the multiplicity of those things. So in this case, the MongoDB uh, cluster here is of three VMs, but you can change this at the moment of provisioning. Okay, so, and then the, 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 the recipes will actually scale uh, and then take this into account. Um, now we can also do that. We can, as part of a deployment, you can break it into, into uh, subsets and you can deploy different parts in different clouds or different regions of the same cloud and then reach higher um, uh, resilience, uh, for example. So you can uh, have the same deployment view but spans actually virtual machines on different, different clouds at the same time. Okay, a bit of architecture. Um, I'm not going to have time to go through all the details, but just what is important is the, is the, is the, the data flows, if you want, in, in, into this. I said before, it's a RESTful web interface, a uh, web service. So all of the, um, the synchronous calls come here and basically are round trips to, to the database and out with minimum processing, because that's really fast. Everything that requires activity, especially round trips to the clouds, goes through an asynchronous uh, process, so there's a queue where, where all the puts and posts are, are, are inserted. That gets executed in an asynchronous way. This does round trips to the clouds and back. 
and this information is just refreshed on, on pulls, on gets, if you want, from the, 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 the rest part. Um, in terms of technology that is used, we use um, so Java for, for a, a lot of it. Um, we're using more and more Clojure. So Clojure is used for uh, the rendering. We're using the uh, NLive framework for that. Uh, but uh, where it, it really rocks, it's, it's, it's where the uh, synchronous processing takes place. So we're using Core Async, which is a Clojure version of uh, Go, if, if, uh, if you guys have followed that. It's just fantastic for multi-threaded and concurrent uh, development. Um, Everything that is client that will be deployed into a virtual machine or interface with the virtual machine now is, is, uh, is switching to, uh, to uh, libcloud and Python. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, so but that's, that's the roughly the, and that one last thing is we are, are uh, migrating from uh, RDBMS or like uh, SQL databases to Couchbase to take advantage of a document-based system. And then the mix of, of um, uh, consistency and, and eventually consistent um, capabilities of, the, of, of that database. And it makes scaling a lot simpler as well. OK, so um, the way Slipstream talks to the cloud and the way it's able to actually do native, if you want, multi-cloud support is through a connector uh, architecture. So in, in the Java world, uh, I've just pulled out here uh, the, um, the connector interface. Um, and it has a bunch of uh, you know, launch, terminate, describe instance, standard things that, that any, any, uh, any system interfacing with infrastructure as a service needs to do, where basically we're, we're passing the, this run object, this, the, the ob the, the, one of the, the, the model I was describing earlier, which actually says, you know, go and then and instantiate something. You know, and a, that run could be a single image or could actually be a deployment, which would be a, an aggregation of, 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 uh, of virtual machines. Okay. So that's what needs to be implemented uh, for, for, uh, for uh, for every, uh, every cloud we talk to. And these are loaded dynamically, so you can actually instantiate more connectors without having to restart the serv service. <clears throat> um, a bit about uh, libcloud. So we started with jclouds, and then uh, libcloud when jclouds was not giving any support. And then more and more, we, we're shifting to, to libcloud. And, and why is that? Um, well, first, it's Python. So when we're deploying um, into, uh, into the cloud, into a virtual machine, um, Python is, is supported everywhere except Windows. But we're, we're working around that as well because we support Windows. Um, but libcloud itself is, is, uh, is more flexible. It's easier to extend, to hack. Um, and the, the community is quite vibrant. And it's actually moving quite fast, which is great. And it, they've, been, they've done a great job at not breaking backward compatibility, which is always the case. Um, so that's what we're, we're shifting. And in terms of interop, well, we basically just have uh, wrappers from the Java to the, the, the Python. Um, and this is important because when we're doing a deployment, Slipstream basically hands over to a, a small virtual machine called an orchestrator. It, 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 it hands over the, the work of deploying the rest of, of, of the system. And that's all in Python. Okay, so that's where it's, it's important that it, um, it's not intrusive because bringing Java with you is, um, is heavier. So I said before that Slipstream is open source. So where uh, it's, it's released under an Apache 2.0 license. Uh, it's hosted in uh, GitHub under the Slipstream organization. Um, in terms of development, uh, we now have 12 uh, full-time developers. Uh, six are provided by, um, by Six Square. So half, half of our team is working full-time on, on that. The other half is actually coming from industry and academia alike, about 50-50. Um, it's actually growing uh, reasonably uh, fast. But it's staying manageable. You know, we don't have any intention of creating a monster. Uh, it's actually quite nice to be working in, in, a, in, a, in, a, focused, in a focused team. Um, and we're, we'll be uh, rolling out uh, in, in our, through our blog a lot of um, uh, build and test uh, best practices and services as well so that it's actually easier to contribute. Uh, so, so watch that space for, um, for that. Um, Having said that, not everything is open source. Okay, so we have about half of the connect. The core is open source. That's no problem. Half of the connectors are open source as well. But the connectors that are talking to proprietary solutions, then we've decided to keep those proprietary as well. Okay. Um, so, for example, here are the uh, open source uh, connectors. So you'll recognize CloudStack, OpenStack. We have an OCCI and a Stratus Lab with open. Open uh, Nebula behind. We also have a connector for physical uh, machines, so either a VM or a, a physical server. So we can integrate physical or singleton, if you want, in your infrastructure in, into into deployments. Um, 
The uh, proprietary connectors that we have at the moment are uh, Cloud Sigma VMware, that's vCloud Director, uh, EC2, Abiquo, and uh, IBM Smart Cloud Entry. And now just for, um, when, when we're providing a dashboard, this, this view, I didn't have time to show you much about, um, we need to get a lot of information from the cloud layer in order to, to kind of bring together, to aggregate this information in terms of historical use, um, where I am in terms of how many VMs I have with respect to qu the quota I've been, I've been given, because there's a quota concept that can be switched on as well uh, in, in Slipstream. I want to be able to see what are, which exact VMs are running on which clouds I, I have, um, and, and so on. And so in order to do this, we need to query the user, the, the, uh, the, uh, the API of the, of, of the, uh, the, the IaaS um, uh, layer uh, on a regular basis. So what we do is by default, that's, that's you can change those parameters, is every four minutes, we basically scan through all the users, all the clouds that are connected, you know, to gather this information. And for every uh, online user, so users have, have done a, a request in the last 60 seconds, then we do this every 10 seconds, to provide a, a, a responsive uh, interface. So that's a lot of work for our servers. And if you have a large uh, system, then it's also gonna be a, a lot of work for the infrastructure as a service API that's on the other side. So, Pull works because it works for everything, but what we're really looking for, so that's a, <laughs> a call to the cloud stack community is, you know, can we do push? Could we register to some event change and then just be notified when something changes? That would actually be great, I think, for ev everybody. So I don't know if that's possible. Maybe it's a discussion we can have later on. So what's next? Um, in our technology roadmap, we have, so connectors, we're, we're, I'm hoping we're gonna start soon with Microsoft uh, for their, uh, Infrastructure as a Service uh, Azure offer. Uh, there's a CIMI from the MTF um, uh, standard for Infrastructure as a Service API that uh, we're, um, we're developing a connector to, for. Autoscale is, 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 the, is the topic at the moment. Uh, I mean, most of my guys, uh, including myself, are working on this. So the ability to, to do, uh, to autoscale beyond the initial uh, scale. Uh, and it ties with a unified monitoring uh, framework. Um, we're working uh, with enterprise as well, and there's a few features that are needed there in terms of uh, you know, advanced roles, uh, how to manage contracts and, 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 and um, manage more accurately or, or uh, in a better way quotas and so on within an organization, and it ties also to the billing. And we're also listening as well um, to what, what we want. So if you wanna have a, a play, um, we have a SaaS uh, off, uh, offer, it's free. So go and, and, and play with it. Um, there's two connectors enabled there. That's what I've demoed today. Uh, so the cloud stack one is, is, run, is running on exoscale. Like I said, it's, it's in, it's in uh, Switzerland. It's a great system. It works uh, wonderfully. It's fast as well, um, which is great. Uh, just before I, I conclude, a few resources. We have two blog series that are running at the moment. See Through Cloud is a, it's a journey through a cloud from a non-technical pers per perspective. So if, if you have people that are kind of um, wondering what is the best way to approach and understand cloud, maybe that's an interesting read. Um, uh, and, and it's also quite funny, so it's, it's quite a good, a good one. And Tech, Tech Corner is from the developers as well. We have uh, product descriptions and a lot of documentation. If you go at the top right of Slipstream, there's an information button there, and, and there's a lot of documentation that ships with the application. Um, and you can install the client just with uh, pip if you wanna play with that. So a quick call for action. Um, we're looking for um, collaborating and further developing the Cloud Stack Connector with the Cloud Stack community. So that's something we started to talk about and it'd be great if we could actually eventually not hand over in a, in a shoot and forget, but hand over and then, and then, and then collaborate with the, the Cloud Stack community because you guys are you know, building a lot of new, new features and so on that we'd love to expose in through, uh, in, in, into, uh, through Slipstream. Um, and we have, uh, we have started the uh, retreats. We have a winter and a summer retreat, so that the, the, the winter one was uh, in the Alps. This, uh, this winter we went skiing, it was great. In the back top corner is Mont Blanc, it was a beautiful week. So that's a great way to, um, to join the, the fun, meet the team and, 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 and uh, immerse yourself in, in, in what we do. Uh, and the summer retreat, which will probably be uh, in August, will be on a air and sun theme, the same place where we'll go around a paragliding uh, course for beginners and more advanced people. So if you wanna join fun and, uh, and hard work actually as well, um, then, then it's an invitation. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Marc Elian. We have five minutes for questions. So like in one minute, how would you compare your project to something like a Stratos or, you know, which is also incubating in Apache? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Thanks. We're going to have a talk from Stratos later uh, today, so we'll, we'll be able to... Uh, Give you my, uh, <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, when, you know, one idea with the session here was that CloudStack, you know, doesn't, you know, is never going to do PaaS, where CloudStack is really uh, infrastructure as a service. So we wanted to have people from the PaaS community come here and show us what they're doing and how they're integrating uh, with CloudStack. So we have Sleepstream, uh, Cloudify, talk from Stratos. Um, so, you know, thanks all, all of you for coming and uh, agreeing to present your products, even though, you know, you're kind of competing. One more question? Come on, I'm sure you have questions. What is the database factor which gives us this? Couchbase. So we, we use a uh, by default hypersonic, with a Hibernate uh, <coughs> JP interface, and we're switching to, uh, to Couchbase, which is uh, a document um, based database. And one of the reasons is actually for what I was saying is when we do. Um, when we deploy version to version, it's really easy to break the schema uh, when we're using a, a relational database with a, uh, a document-oriented database. It's, it's much more resilient. It's, it's not a silver bullet either, but uh, it, it provides a, a much um, a smoother path uh, to, uh, to, uh, to upgrades. Um, but also it has a lot of uh, uh, interesting features in terms of uh, uh, concurrency, the, the, the distribution, uh, and, and so on. And has great, great um, closure support as well. So that's another good reason to to uh, to go down that road. Sorry, can you repeat? The contribution. Yeah. Ah. Um, can you can you repeat the question? Yeah. So the the question is, what is the uh, expected contribution from CloudStack from the community? You mean? Right? Okay. Um, it really is, in, in first instance, is, uh, is everything that has to do with uh, the connector that uh, Slipstream uses to interface with, uh, with CloudStack. Um, so it's, it's this, um, uh, the, 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 the Python module that we have around uh, libcloud um, in order to um, um, configure and kind of expose what other parameters uh, that um, a user can use to better define the environment in which that would will describe the virtual machine um, um, so that, for example, we can take advantage of, of uh, for example, firewalling uh, network you know, as, as SDN comes around, um, able to take advantage of all of those uh, features that are, are not part of the, the standard way because there's no common denominators at this stage between the, the cloud uh, providers. But because we have dedicated connectors, it doesn't matter, right? We, it's just a question of, of, of exposing those features through so that uh, CloudStack will shine through um, via this, this, uh, this connector so you'll be able to do more when you're targeting a CloudStack um, uh, endpoint as opposed to another infrastructure as a service solution. Great. Well, thanks, Marc Thank you.